All right, we're going to talk about images. We're going to talk about narrative images. Hi. Um, so we all, we see I images every single day, thousands and thousands every single day. Not so pretty as this one. Um, I'm going to talk about the difference between images like these, which are landscapes or still lives, um, the kind you might see in art history, portraits, or even a drawing of a leg, for instance, and contrast those with what we're mostly working in, which is narrative images. That's a narrative image. Um, or those are narrative images. There, the boy is just is holding up this head. He's got this sword. There, this creature is screaming. Something's happening in a narrative image. Um, you're really drawn into the present, but you're also drawn into either the past or the future. This is two skeletons fighting over a herring, a really compelling uh, image in the present, something definitely happening. It's in the title, <laughs> that they're fighting over a herring. Um, and so anyway, these are great narrative images from art history as well. So narrative images always have action, something happening, even if it's just like staring into space or I mean, small actions matter, small actions count. Um, and they always show us a present, they usually imply a past or a future. Um, great place to start with these is The Far Side by Gary Larson. So here we see this like, you know, imagine you don't know the myth. Imagine you don't know this giant ape is King Kong. It's still a really interesting image. It's this giant ape on the ground. But you look at that little leash and you follow it underneath and you realize like, oh, <laughs> the owner has been squashed, right? So you're, you're drawn to this really, this interesting image in the present and then your mind sort of pieces together what happened in the past. Gary Larson did this all the time, lots of times sort of just repeating himself actually in a fun way. Here we see like safari, see wild animals up close, and we see something has happened to the owner of this camera, glasses, and hat. Same thing here. This is one of the one of the quieter images. In fact, almost nothing is happening except these ripples at the bottom seem to be just sort of moving outward, but the image is so striking and the detail so strange that we um, still can piece together what happened in the past. Um, so he would play around with the future too. So here's this moment, this dog sort of like waiting for this cat to do something. And the past doesn't really matter, typical dog and cat stuff, but what, what we put together in our future is what's going to happen next when that cat goes into the washing machine. Totally hilarious, or dryer rather. Likewise, and here's some great text, inadvertently Roy dooms the entire earth to annihilation when in an attempt to be friendly, he seizes their leader by the head and shakes vigorously. And of course, what we're really compelled to envision um, is what happens next. How do these kinds of creatures annihilate the planet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is almost the same idea and no one ever heard from the Anderson brothers again. Um, and again, um, what matters in a, in a great narrative image too is also like what is what draws us to the compelling present. Um, the look on the boys' faces, which is really just sort of, sort of sad and simple. The look on the tossed up uh, bear cub is really um, surprised and, and dismayed um, and, and the not violent, not angry look on the on the mother bear's face yet, right? So like all of these things are really compelling and sort of help us stitch together in our minds a little story, even in one image. Um, so some problem solving um, happens in a, your average narrative. Um, you're, the, you're keeping the reader a little bit of problem solving is really uh, a way to keep them engaged and keep them reading. So here we have the two scientist most peculiar of Sydney, another scattering of Cub Scout attire. Well, of course, we sort of piece it together pretty easily. Um, but it's not as instantaneous as some of the other ones. It takes us a moment to sort of search through the image and figure out what has happened. Uh, that, I think, is pretty much a riff right off of this um, James Thurber cartoon. What have you done with Dr. Milmus? Anyway, um, another one. In what was destined to be a short-lived spectacle, a chicken suspended by a balloon floated through the samurai bar's doorway. So, um, pretty interesting image just to glance at. 
but piecing together with the words and the pictures just lets us imagine this, the mayhem in the next panel. Um, sometimes just uh, adding, so adding details, adding strangeness, adding style. Here we're adding a little bit of character, right? The character, hold still, Carl, don't move an inch. You know, you want to believe that this character is a good person and wants to help, right? But this is the wrong way to do it. So more about style and the sort of choices we make. Here are two, in fact, there'll be a third painting of the same story, The Murder of Murat um, by Charlotte Corday. Um, and this is Edward Munch's version of it on the left and um, Paul Jacques Aimé's, <laughs> I mean, Baudry's version on the right. That painter, I don't know, Munch, I know, of course, and also David, which we'll see next. Um, but it's two different paintings of the same moment. Um, Marat here has been murdered in the bathtub um, by this woman, Charlotte, Cur uh, Charlotte Corday, and uh, with a knife in the bathtub. You're getting two totally different versions of that image here. The knife is still in the chest here. He is sort of slumped over. She is sort of on her way out. She's holding on to the, the uh, window sill. To me, it looks like she's holding on to the blade still, but I think she might be holding on to a sheath. Um, but it's full of tension, This this um, the figure of Charlotte Corday here. Here, um, I'm not even sure if the blade is still in Munch's in the chest in the Munch painting or not. But what's interesting is Charlotte Corday is staring directly at us. Um, and so here, I'm a little more interested in the future. I get the past. Oh yeah, she stabbed this. I also know the story if I'm a French person or if I'm in from this era um, or studying art history, I sort of know the story. But I'm, what I'm compelled by is her character and what she's going to do next. Here, I'm, I'm not... I'm interested in the kind of murder a woman like this would um, would enact because she's staring right at us as if she's not interested in in um, the law or anything like that. It's really, really compelling. And then, of course, oh yeah, there's the chest. There's the knife in the chest. So we're looking at a sheath or something. Whereas the painting of uh, Murat by David is like, it's like beatific. It's like what we're seeing is like, you can piece it together. There's the knife down there. There's blood. There's this letter that he's writing splattered in blood. But it's also like we drink this in as if he's some sort of beautiful martyr, some beautiful Christ-like martyr. And that's certainly how he's painted here. And so again, what we're doing is there's the knife in that pan in that painting. What we're doing again is is examining how we can make our present image captivating. There's a variety of ways, but also how much of the past or the future do we sort of bring in to to um, keep people sort of engaged with the image and the story. Um, so here's some more images of where the present is just so interesting and compelling that, that that's more interesting than um, than piecing together the past or the future, right? So he, whew, a fit night out for man nor beast, says this man as he's coming in with all these animals coming in, right? And so we get it. It's not, you know, we're not super interested in the particulars of this storm, and we're not super interested in the particulars of what all these animals are going to do in the house. What we're interested in is this moment where all of those animals are coming in in this, in this way, and they're all sort of like gentle and existing together, and it's just, and wet. <laughs> it's really, really a wonderful drawing. Um... Again, the present here is so delightful, interesting, or strange that we stay fixed on it while also stitching together time. This is a great one from George Booth. Uh, Tony asked me to ask you, Mr. Bates, do you know offhand the whereabouts of your service manual? <laughs> Which is great. But what's really great is just sitting here watch, looking at Tony and looking at the mess Tony has created and looking at the dog looking at the mess Tony has created and looking at the gaping hole. <laughs> where the engine was it's just so delightful but yeah you can imagine you can sit there and just imagine tony t taking out piece after piece after piece after piece the future isn't really of interest here i mean there's a variety of futures that could happen and as a narrative as a storyteller we would make some choices but but the real fun thing is just looking a helicopter overhead this image is delightful partially because they don't seem 
bothered or surprised by the fact that they're falling to the ground. They're still sort of like captivated by their own um, beginning dance moves. And um, we know they're going to fall. We've, we're piecing it together. Um, and uh, But still delighted in sort of like the gentle breaking of gravity here. And again, this image, very funny. Um, this story that we all know, the tortoise and the hare, doesn't even get started because um, moderni mon modernity comes in and this car or this truck uh, flattens them both. But what's interesting is the, flatten the drawing of the flattened turtle and hare, and it sort of puts them on the same level, you know, and the flattenness of it. It's just a really interesting drawing. So those are some of the tools we have to work with. This drawing, I forget this author, this artist's name. I love this, but these undertakers, and it takes us a while to piece together that they're undertakers. Um, but they are basically ambulance chasers, and they're seeing this crash, and they're on their way. Um, these images, we see them in photography. We see them in journalist journalism. We see them um, every day in, um, in our real world. Um, this is another moment that's so striking, um, and we can imagine the future. Are they going to arrest her? Are they going to beat her is she going to float away you know um but but because the present because the image itself is so striking the contrast of angles the contrast of personalities the contrast of course of the scale of the number of people and it's also similar to this image here too where we're really compelled by we're really really this is the creation of suspense what's going to happen we're very interested in the next step but also because the moment is so um so decidedly presented for us that we're really compelled by it for a number of reasons. So that's what we're talking about, narrative images. It tells us about the present. Um, narrative image, something's happening. Um, and it usually implies um, a before or an after. And sometimes there's some cause and effect involved. We didn't really get to that, but we talk about that in other, other presentations. The far side is a great example. Um, gentle problem solving, trying to piece together what happened or what might happen will keep your reader engaged in the story. So not giving them every single thing that ever happened in the story, but letting them piece some things together. And more complicated readings will reveal some ways of doing that. So can you make your narrative image exciting, interesting, compelling in the present, while also giving us that element of the past um, or the future? You can do that with details about the character, like this one here, details about the action and location, style, emotional details, mood, stuff like that, decoration. Um, often, just to give people a starting place, I like to give them just a simple image like this, three people. Um, can you like redesign this image to give us something about the past or something about the future? Where are they going or where are they coming from? And I've got a list of possible options, but there's thousands of other possible options. And um, that's a good end point. If for anyone interested in taking this exercise one step further and doing their own. So narrative images, thanks very much.